Welcome back to another awesome video. Today, we're gonna talk about five forgotten things from the 1980s cable TV era that we don't have to deal with today. Number one, memorizing channels. On the back of this 1980s remote, you see a cable company provided sticker that maps every channel to its number. So for example, HBO was on channel 24, Showtime on 25, etc. Today, many remotes don't even have numbers. This one has arrows and even a button for services like Disney Plus. But back in the 80s, remember, there was no computer built into your TV to do a voice search or display channel names or a program guide. So while you're lounging on the couch, you could at least exercise your brain and memorize some channel numbers or just pick up the TV guide or local newspaper. You have a TV? No, I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. So how do you think you'd like memorizing channel numbers instead of just typing in a search? I would rather type in a search. Okay. Well, what made this even more difficult was the fact that a single area like Memphis might have four or five different sets of channel numbers for each suburb. Also, there were weird types of analog interference that could occur on cable systems, and to avoid this, cable companies would often rebroadcast local channels on different channels, but then their converter box would mask this from the user. So for example, in our area, channel five would be sent over the cable on channel four, and if you used their converter box, you'd get it on five, but if you used your own cable ready TV, you'd get it on four. And things got more confusing when HD was introduced a few years later. Number two, the converter box. With 1980s cable, you sometimes needed a converter box. The cable box worked sort of like a Blu-ray player or DVD player VCR that it used your TV as a monitor and it unpacked all the channels from the cable that were coming into your house. These were rented, so I don't have one anymore, but here is one of my old home movies. And in this film, you can kind of see the cable box we were using in 1984. This is a Scientific Atlanta model with a membrane keypad and optional remote. What do you think? Wow. What, what does it say on your shirt? Memphis Americans, it was a soccer team. And cable boxes were also an example of a case where the revenue producing desires of a cable company overtook what could have been a very flexible technical system. Very quickly, manufacturers came out with cable ready TVs, which eliminated one technical reason for a cable box, the ability to receive cable frequencies, which could be built into a TV. However, the cable box wouldn't die because most of the cable boxes also contained a descrambler, which allowed you to receive premium channels. So if you wanted HBO, you had to have a box to unscramble it. Why? Well, the same cable signal was broadcast everywhere to every house. So only the box itself knew which accounts could receive what channels. For non-scrambled channels, cable-ready TVs were great. The consumer had the choice of his own equipment. You could split a cable once it entered your property and send it to multiple TVs or VCRs. Free cheating the system. In the early 1980s, the descrambling system was controlled by chips that the cable installer had to physically put into the converter box. And so some enterprising installers would sell upgrades on the sly. Ain't got nothing on here, HBO, Disney, nothing. The cable guys in our area would also sell you the remote control a lot cheaper than the company would. Can give them to you for uh, 50 bucks. Eventually our town was upgraded to a new system that didn't require on-site visits and was controlled from the central cable office. Nobody's gotta know. Yeah, give me the whole thing. I'll take the whole package, okay? <laughs> Set me up. But technology upgrades didn't stop people from trying to beat the system. Just forget it. Don't, don't do it. What? I, I don't want... They'll catch me. They, they will catch me. I, I know that. Throughout the 80s, you could ride away for all sorts of shady catalogs like this one. It, I mean, everybody does it, right? What? Oh, hey, if you're having second thoughts, just read this pamphlet. So you've decided to steal cable. Uh -huh. And for anyone watching this in 2021 who is shocked at this blatant display of criminal activity, remember in the early 1980s, people just didn't take technology that seriously. Things like passwords and technology restrictions that people guard with their life and encrypt today weren't physical, so they just weren't real to that many people. I was going to do your family a favor and hook up the Disney Channel for free. Well, forget it. Yes. I'd like to know what the legality is of companies that are selling converter boxes that are not associated with the cable companies. Have you bought one? Uh, I've been looking at one, yes. And um, I don't know if it's legal for me to buy a box and pay for the basic cable uh -huh. and have all the benefits of, of the cable without paying for it. Are you going to be buying it from a store or will you be buying it from somebody you know at work, or somebody who's got a shop in his basement? What's 
What's the offer you're getting? Word on the street is that you have an illegal cable hook. No, no, I, it wasn't me. It was, it was my wife's, my wife's idea. Yeah, yeah, I would never Hey, 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 settle down, big fella. <laughs> oh, we're just, no, whoa, me. we're just wondering if we could watch the fight. Oh, sure, sure, be my guest. California has a, has a new law in it that, that makes, if not the ownership of a decoder box, the, the use of a decoder box a, uh, a very serious crime. Most states do. And, and uh, that's, that's theft of service. I've been talking to a lot of people around here about theft of service, as a matter of fact. And uh, it's, becoming, it's, it's becoming such a problem to this industry that they're, going, they're not going to be, be closing their, uh, their eyes to it any longer. Uh, what are you in here for? Stow Cable TV, HBO. Oh, you're a bad dude, man. So it's a big problem. But I am envious of my friend who has one of those, uh, one of those little boxes. He gets all the, all the pay services for nothing. Uh, I guess in New York it would cost you fifty plus dollars to do that. So I'm giving uh, Manhattan Cable my money, and he's got it for free. New York and L.A. probably have more pirates in them than any two cities in the country. I mean, it's it is a badge of honor in in both places to not be paying your cable bill. Number four, text only channels. Returning to the home movie again, you see on the TV, it's just a bunch of scrolling text. That's what we called the electronic program guide, which was just some low-end computer putting out text. These systems were also used for governments and high schools or other types of stations that didn't have a signal to broadcast the entire day. Very special performance with the renowned jazz pianist Marion McPartland this Saturday at 8.15. Five, war with the VCR. You could rent a movie a lot sooner than it would appear on cable. So cable companies were worried at first. There's a lot of talk here, a lot of undercurrent of concern about pay television and its future, particularly because of the VCR boom. And VCR offers you the opportunity to see it whenever you want. Do you so, own one yourself? I do. Ultimately, these fears were unfounded as cable and VCR existed peacefully together for many years, after which streaming won out, which streaming brings together the best of both worlds, on-demand delivery without physical media over a cable wire. But I can understand their concerns from a 1984 perspective. I'm sure these cable companies invested tons of money in equipment like touch-tone controlled pay-per-view systems. <laughs> Well, that was five fun forgotten facts about cable TV. If you have any other cool facts from the 80s, leave them in the comments. And that about wraps it up. We'll see you next time for another awesome video.